Hello everybody, my name is Ikenna from Smiling Sun. Everything, solar installation, everything, Invata installation, everything going green. Hope you guys are super cool today. <laughs> All right, you guys are welcome. And today we're trying to find out the difference between these two types of battery. Right here on my right is the gel battery, all right? And by my left is tubular battery, AKA wet cell battery, AKA open flooded lead acid battery. So we're trying to find out exactly what are the differences between these two batteries. But I'm assuming you already know what the functions of a battery is. A battery is an energy storage device. So you store your energy in here and then you get to use it whenever you want to use it. So this really comes handy in situations of emergency, right? So if you need an emergency backup energy, then you will definitely need an energy storage device, which is the battery for you to store that energy in here and, and then get to use it at a later time, right? So that's the function of a battery, it's an energy storage device. Hey guys, if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? We need you to be part of this community, all right? And don't forget, once you subscribe, you'll be the first to be notified once we have fresh and brand new videos. And of course, the more you subscribe, the more we can reach out to more people so that we can build a very large community, all right? Don't forget to comment, don't forget to share, and do not forget to like. All right, so let's get into it. This is a gel battery, okay? And this is a tubular battery. So uh, most homeowners keep wondering what exactly is the difference between the two batteries? Because they say that when the installers come to set up our installations, uh, they pretty much recommend the gel batteries for reasons best known to them. So let's try to get you into it so that next time you want to do your solar system setup, uh, you'll be able to make your choices from an informed point of view. You should be able to say, yes, this is the best battery that suits my situation because there's every battery that is designed for every situation in your solar installation. You don't just choose any battery. You really have to look into the battery, know what the battery is about, know what the differences are as compared to other batteries uh, before you go on to get it. So in that way, you'll be able to get value for the monies that you're spending getting this battery. So for the record, the two batteries, which is the gel battery and the tubular battery, both contain the same major base, which is the sulfuric acid. But whilst this is diluted or mixed up with distilled water, this is mixed with fume silica, all right, thereby forming an immobile liquid. All right, some, some kind of a very solid paste, if there's a word like that. So it, thereby forming a non-spillable liquid. So as we go on, I'll tell you guys the advantages of having a non-spillable liquid in your batteries. All right, so uh, this is mixed with a fume silica forming uh, a more solid paste. And this guy is mixed with distilled water. So that's essentially one of the differences between them. So the major base for the two of them is essentially sulfuric acid. So let's look at the cost or your budget. Uh, one of the battery is more expensive than the other. Uh, well, to some people, they say that um, the prices, the difference in the prices are quite very insignificant. All right, it's very negligible. But for the records, the gel battery is more expensive because it's more expensive to produce. It's more difficult and more intricate. So the process of the production in itself makes it more expensive than the tubular battery. So let's look at the maintenance for these batteries. The gel battery is a 100% maintenance free battery. So what that means is that there's absolutely nothing for you to maintain in this battery. And that's why it's referred to as SMF, sealed maintenance free battery. It's completely sealed and requires no maintenance. So from my word, I always say it's plug and play. So when you have this installed, there's no form of maintenance. You use it till the very last day that you need to change it. But for the tubular battery, there's a lot of maintenance that needs to be done. You will need to clean up the terminals. There's always gonna be a corrosion at the terminal. You need to clean that corrosion to be able to aid free flow of current in the system because uh, if that corrosion is not cleaned up, it begins to form resistance in the battery and you wouldn't have that free flow of current in the system. Uh, but that's not the only thing that you're doing. You also have to be able to hydrate the batteries once in a while. All right, so you have the modern ones now and you have the old ones. The old ones is pretty much once in every three to four months, uh, but, but the very modern ones that you have now, which are the heat seals, you have to hydrate them probably once in seven months or once in a year, but you definitely have to hydrate, pour the distilled water because as the battery is charging, the electrolyte level is not gonna be going down because the battery in itself 
is emitting hydrogen into the air. So you'll need to refill the batteries by pouring in distilled water, not ordinary water, because ordinary water has a lot of components in it that is very harmful to the battery. So you have the distilled water, which is 100% free from any form of chemical compounds. All right, so the, definitely what you're gonna be using to refill this guy is gonna be distilled water. But for the gel battery, gel battery is 100% maintenance free battery. Okay, so if you don't have that energy or if you don't have that ability to be able to maintain the batteries, I suggest you go for a gel battery because it doesn't require any form of maintenance whatsoever. So in situations when you're gonna need to power those very big inductive appliances, all those heavy duty machines, all those very high torque machines, then the tubular battery is ideal for them. All right, so when you're dealing with all those machines that needs a very huge amount of current or voltage to start up, requiring most times it comes as a surge, then the tubular battery does a very good job in trying to, you know, ensuring that it gives it exactly the volume of energy and current that it needs to be able to take off. But for the gel battery, the gel battery might not be able to do a good job as regards having all of those big machines loaded up on it. So if you expose this to very high machines, very high torque machines, over time, it's gonna kill the lifespan of the gel battery as the gel battery is not built for all those heavy appliances, heavy duty machines and all of that, especially those kind of machines and appliances that you have in those industries and all of that. So in those kind of situations, the tubular battery is ideal, you know, to be able to handle those high demand in energy. All right, but the gel battery isn't and the lifespan might be cut short. All right, so let's look at the lifespan. The tubular battery would most definitely outlive the gel battery. So the average tubular battery should be able to give you at least 3000 cycles. All right, but the gel battery would not be able to give you that. So in some cases, you'll be having like 1,500, 1,600 cycles to 1,800 cycles on the gel battery. And the reason is simple. You have access to the tubular battery. You can top up when the liquid goes down, you can refill the batteries, but for the gel battery, it's completely sealed. You don't have access into the battery. So if you charge it with a voltage that is not recommended for the battery or it moves a little bit above the curve, of the recommended charging voltage the gels in the battery will definitely dry up all right so it's not good for very frequent cycling it's not what i would recommend for a frequent cycling so over time that would expose the plates and of course the batteries will go bad so the tubular battery has a longer lifespan than the gel battery so the gel battery is non-spillable but the tubular battery is spillable. So what that means is that if you had to tilt this battery, tilt it like halfway, the liquid on the inside of the battery is going to spill. But for the gel battery, the liquid on the inside is not going to spill because the liquids are immobile. It's a strong paste. Okay, so even if you turn it over and put it on its side, it is not going to spill. Now, what is the advantages of having a non-spillable battery? It means that you can install the batteries vertically. You can install the batteries however you want to install the batteries, but you can only install the tubular battery in a sitting position. Anything else outside the sitting position, the liquid and the battery is gonna spill. But this guy has that advantage, which is a gel battery over the tubular battery, as you can um, install this battery horizontally or vertically. So another difference between the two of them is that once the gel battery is dead, it's dead. There's nothing else you can do about it. The only thing you can do pretty much is to buy a brand new one and replace this battery. But when the tubular battery goes bad, if you're technical enough, you can actually change the electrolyte and revive the batteries. In some cases, it might work. So if the battery plates are not badly depleted, you can decide to change the electrolyte in the battery and charge the battery back and it wakes up. So because you have access into the battery, it's a lot easier for you to revive the battery back into life to serve you for a little while. But for the gel battery, you don't have access. You don't have that luxury of uh, being able to replace the paste that is on the inside. So that's a very big shortfall for the gel battery over the tubular battery. 
So the gel battery is more environmentally friendly, okay? So it doesn't emit gas into the atmosphere when it's charging. So uh, you can have this installed on the inside of the house. It's 100% environmentally friendly. But the tubular battery emits gas or hydrogen into the atmosphere while it's charging. So it's considered not to be environmentally friendly. So you shouldn't install this inside of the house. So the best place for you to put this battery will be outside of the house. Just make a little bit of a space on the outside and install this battery. So whilst the battery is charging and it's emitting the gas and hydrogen into the atmosphere, it pretty much dissipates nicely into the air. All right, but this you don't have to worry about anything as there's no gas coming out. So you can put it inside the house. It's safe and it's environmentally friendly. So another downside too for the gel battery is the fact that when the batteries has been on standby mode for a very long time, you could have the batteries begin to sulfate. It could happen to the gel battery. It could also happen to the tubular battery. But if for some reason you're not around and you're on vacation, you left um, your house for a very long time and you come back and your batteries have been on standby mode, the tubular battery could start sulfating, but you can bring it back to life with equalization. But unfortunately, um, the gel battery does not go through equalization charging. The gel battery goes through only three cycles of charging, which is uh, bulk charging, absorption charging, and then reverting to floating charging. That's all we have for you today, guys. Thank you so very much for being part of this. If you haven't subscribed, come on. We've given you every reason why you should. <laughs> so if you want to be informed about what's going on in and around the world of solar technology, all the trends, every single happenings, then this is the place you should be. Don't forget, the moment you subscribe, you'll be the first to be notified once we have fresh and brand new videos. And of course, the more you subscribe, the more we can reach out to more people who need to have this information. Thank you so very much, guys. Don't forget to share, don't forget to comment, and do not forget to like. See you guys in the next video.